of trimpate is changed. I feel it in the durability. I feel it in the open time. I smell it in the fumes. Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember using oil-based trim paint. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with Practical Painting. We are professional painters here to help you with your various painting endeavors. In this video, I'll be giving you my thoughts on Advance from Benjamin Moore. So let's get to it. I gave a lengthy explanation of the historic use of oil-based paints on trim in the last video I posted. Uh, it was called Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel. Uh, you can check that out wherever that goes up here. Um, and actually, that emerald urethane is somewhat similar to the product I'm going to be going over today, so you might be interested in checking that product out as well. In any event, and long story short, uh, oil-based trim paints have fell out of fashion over the last couple decades due to the laws changing about VOC and also uh, just consumer preferences. So in order to fill the hole that those products uh, previously occupied, paint manufacturers have released hybrid products like this one. This is Advance from Benjamin Moore. It is a waterborne interior alkyd and it's been out for a hot minute. Originally they released this paint to I think go on cabinets, furniture, and you know things like that. Uh, and then guys were using it for those applications and then eventually started using it on interior trim in the rest of the home. So uh, when I say trim, I mean uh, baseboards, chair rail molding, crown molding, doors, windows, windowsills, all that stuff. Basically any of the interior woodwork in your home. With this product, they basically took a water-based paint and added oil resins to it. Uh, the, the goal of that is to take advantage of an oil-based formula. So that would be the durability, the adhesion, and also the leveling, and then combine that with the ease of use of a water-based formula. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to use this product several times. Like I said, it's been out for a little while, uh, but recently we used it in a really nice bathroom that just got renovated, and uh, I'm kind of fresh off that experience, so I thought this would be a good time to make this video. And uh, let's start with the things that I like. Number one is the finish. To me, that is the best attribute of this product. Uh, when I say finish, it just means what it looks like when it dries. Uh, this particular product comes in several sheens, matte, satin, semi-gloss, and high-gloss. I've got the semi-gloss right in front of me, but actually the most popular selling uh, sheen, at least in my area, is the satin version. Uh, a lot of guys like using that on the inside of older homes, uh, like old farm homes and things like that. Uh, because uh, the satin finish is a little softer. It's considered more of a factory finish, which is why a lot of people like using it on cabinets um, and furniture and things like that, and also on trim and older homes because sometimes the semi-gloss can look a little bit out of place. This is the semi-gloss version of that, which uh, I have that one because that's what we used on the last job that we did with this product. Um, and we were working in a newer house, so the semi-gloss sheen didn't look out of place or anything. It looked awesome when we were done. Part of the finish looking so good is all the leveling agents in this particular product. Even on the front of the can, it says excellent leveling, extended open time. Uh, those two attributes tend to feed into one another. Open time refers to how long it takes a product to dry. So this product has an extremely long open time, which gives the leveling agents a lot of time to act. What that does is mitigates brush strokes, roller marks, any of that stuff, provides a very uniform finish. And anytime you have a uniform finish in a, uh, in a paint product that you've applied, uh, that just lends itself to looking really awesome uh, because everything looks nice and uniform and the sheen is dispersed evenly through the entire product, which is cool. Numero dos is durability. Um, as you would expect from any hybrid product, this is going to be more durable than a you know, latex-based or a water water-based paint. Uh, that's not a hybrid. Uh, so this is super durable. It's going to hold up o like a, over a longer period of time to like high touch areas around doors, things like that. And it is more wipeable again than a latex product. I still never recommend like scrubbing a paint with an abrasive, like an abrasive sponge or anything. That's going to start breaking down the sheen almost like no matter what product you put on your trim or walls or whatever. So be mindful of that. All paint breaks down over time. So wiping's usually cool, but scrubbing 
uh, you're you're kind of starting to roll the dice a little bit. Uh, one thing to mention about this particular product, if you're going to use it on like shelves or a mantelpiece or anything where you're going to be putting things on top of it, like a big bay window where you've got plants or things like that in it, you want to give it three to five days to cure. Once this product actually cures and hardens all the way through, it's really durable, but if you start putting things on it, you're, you could mess up the finish if it hasn't cured out and hardened completely. Number three is adhesion. Uh, just a little background on trim paints in general for a second. If you were going to paint over an oil-based trim paint, so like say you have an older house that has that's previously been painted with oil, or it has like a really aggressive sheen to it, or uh, like stain trim that's been polyurethaned, Usually, if you're going to use a, like an acrylic latex semi-gloss paint, like a uh, Regal Select semi-gloss or something like that, you're going to have to prime that with an adhesion primer or an oil-based primer and then run your top coats of your latex-based paint on top of that. With a product like this, you don't have to do that. You can go straight over oil-based trim or really any kind of trim. It's always recommended that your surface that you're painting, particularly with trim paint, is clean, dry, and dull. But uh, this is fairly generous with how how good or bad you prep the surface, and this will grip to just about anything, which is a really nice feature. Number four is coverage. Again, another benefit of this product that I noticed over a lot of the other trim paints I've used, this covers really well, like above what I would have expected. So uh, a lot of times we paint a lot of the same types of things as professional painters. So one of the things that we do a lot of is uh, doors that have been factory primed, whether they're uh, six panel doors or whatever kind of interior swing doors that you see in a you know new construction and uh, th they're always primed this kind of like khaki color that a lot of times takes three coats to cover with most trim paints that I've used with this one we have gotten away with two and it looks great so um, what I have noticed with this particular product is that if it needs two coats, sometimes you can get away with one, and if it normally needs three coats, you can get away with two. All right, now let's chat about some things I'm less fond of. Number one is the runs. This paint runs like crazy. Because of the extended open time and the leveling agents in this paint, you really have to police your drips. All paint will run if it's pooled up enough in a certain area, but because of how loose this paint is, if you're not used to using some a product like this, it just it's gonna run way more than any kind of like latex acrylic, uh, way more than Regal Select or Regal Classic, anything like that. Um, so just be aware of that if you're gonna start using this. Number two is the open time, and I know that's a feature. I get it, it says it right on the can, extended open time, because the leveling is really how they really push this. That's one of the big attributes and why guys like it. However, it's, it's open time, is four to six hours to touch, 16 hours to recoat. So that means after you put this product on, four to six hours later, you can touch it, it won't come off on your fingers. But if you want to do a second coat, you have to wait You have to wait 16 hours. Again, I know it's a feature, but if you're used to a paint that dries quicker and you can do like multiple coats in a day fairly easily, I would just, you know, keep that in your head. This is no joke when it says extended open time. It really means it. My number three gripe with this product is the same issue I have with the emerald urethane. Uh, where they're trying to get the best of both worlds with all the benefits of an oil-based product with the ease of use of a waterborne product. If you just wash out your brush with uh, water and then you don't do this next step, which is doing a quick rinse with mineral spirits, the brush is going to harden because there'll still be residual oil resins in your brush. They're going to harden uh, very, very hard. I've started doing a mineral spirit rinse at the end and that has worked wonders. So just be aware that even though this is a, a waterborne alkyd, you're still going to need to use a little bit of mineral spirits uh, at the end. Number four is the price. This is a premium product. It retails, at least right now, uh, right around 65 bucks, and that is about what you're going to pay for it. If you have a contractor's account with one of your Benjamin Moore stores or you're a homeowner that buys a lot of paint from somewhere, you know, you could probably get it a little bit cheaper, maybe in like the high 50s, but that is roundabout what you're going to pay for this. Uh, you may or may not care. Uh, same thing that I said about the emerald urethane is... It really matters about how much of this product you're going to use. Even though it's a premium product, you know, with trim, you're even on a big job, you might only be going through like two gallons of paint. So it's probably not going to make or break the cost of the job. 
Overall, I like this product. It's still not my go-to trim paint, but we've been using it more and more for specialty applications. I think it's great for high-use surfaces like bay window sills, mantles, cabinets, furniture, and things like that, as long as you respect the open time and actually allow the paint to cure. If you found this video useful in any way, shape, or form, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. That helps us out quite a bit. And keep your eyes out for the next video, which is going to be a comparison video between this product and the Emerald Urethane from Sherwin-Williams, which I talked about a couple times during this video. Until then, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.